Here, we look at an animal that was thought to have become extinct on the Australian mainland thousands of years ago in the island of Tasmania in the early 1900s. But persistent sightings of the striped predator, known as the Tasmanian tiger, have led some researchers to question this. Could there be a small population of them still alive today? Let's take a closer look. The Tasmanian tiger, also known as the Tasmanian wolf, and thylacine was a carnivorous marsupial. It had distinctive wolf-like characteristics, but tiger-like stripes extending down its side from its back. It lived in Australia and some of its surrounding islands during the Pleistocene and into the Holocene. The adults resembled large, short-haired dogs with long, stiff tails. Although not related to dogs, it is a classic example of convergent evolution in which it evolved very similar dog-like features and occupied a similar niche to dogs that were found elsewhere across the globe. Like all apex predators, it played an important role in the ecosystem in which it lived. They were thought to have preyed upon small to medium-sized prey, but the exact size of their prey has been debated. They were nocturnal and crepuscular, coming out under the cover of darkness and in the twilight hours. Whilst they slept in caves, hollowed out trees, and under forest debris in the daytime, they hunted out on the open grasslands at night. They likely fed on ground-dwelling birds such as the Tasmanian native hen and the large Tasmanian emu, an extinct species of today's emus. Another flightless bird, the cassowary, would have also been around at the time of the Tasmanian tiger, but they had developed effective defensive strategies making the emu easier for tigers to hunt. They may have also hunted small mammals. In captivity, however, Tasmanian tigers showed a preference for birds as their prey over other meat offered, and their dentition and bite force were more suited to the hollow bones of birds rather than those of small mammals. Being marsupials, Tasmanian tigers had pouches. They would carry up to four young in their pouch for three months before the offspring were ready to step out into the world. Adults' bodies were up to 130 centimeters, or 51 inches long, with a 65 centimeter, or 26 inch tail. Their dark stripes were mostly along its lower back, backside, and tail, and they faded as the animal grew older. So, what happened to the Tasmanian tiger that once flourished across much of Australia? On the Australian mainland, it is thought that the dingo outcompeted the Tasmanian tiger for food. It was a more versatile hunter and had a more omnivorous diet, making it more flexible in terms of prey availability. The hypercarnivorous Tasmanian tiger had no such flexibility in its diet preference. Furthermore, although its bite force was more powerful than that of the dingo, dingoes could take down large prey not only due to the formation of their skulls, but also due to their ability to hunt in packs. In comparison, the Tasmanian tiger was a solitary hunter. The aborigines began to use dingoes as semi-domesticated dogs, which only encouraged their numbers and saw their populations grow while the Tasmanian tiger seemed to have little advantage over their competitors. But the demise of the mainland Tasmanian tigers wasn't just down to the dingoes and native people. The genetic diversity of the tigers was very low. This made them vulnerable to not only diseases, but also environmental pressures as well. The Tasmanian tigers were known to be susceptible to facial tumor disease, like their relatives, today's Tasmanian devils. However, Scientists don't think the low genetic diversity necessarily solely led to their demise. Recent DNA evidence suggests climate change played its part. They went from being widespread across Australia to extinct from the mainland over a relatively quick period. It is now believed that the most significant cause for this was changes in the climate caused by the El Nino Southern Oscillation Pattern. So, it seems it was a combination of factors that led to the extinction of this fascinating animal on mainland Australia from direct competition from dingoes to the expansion of the aborigines across their habitat and the changing climate. But mainland Australia isn't where recent sightings of Tasmanian tigers have been made. People have claimed to seen glimpses of the so-called extinct animals on the island of Tasmania, famous for another carnivorous marsupial, the Tasmanian devil. The tigers weren't just native to mainland Australia, they were also endemic to New Guinea as well as the Australian island state of Tasmania. Scientists know the exact date that this species became extinct. Tragically, on September 7, 1936, the last ever known live Tasmanian tiger, 
called Benjamin, died in captivity in the Beaumaris Zoo in Hobart. That date has now become a commemorative day in Australia called National Threatened Species Day. In fact, it was ironic that the Australian government finally gave the Tasmanian tiger protection status that very same year, just two months before Benjamin's death. This was perhaps a century or so too late. The day the captive individual died, reportedly of neglect, was a sad day in 1936 for zoologists and conservationists across the world to witness the extinction of an iconic animal, never to be seen again. Or was it never to be seen again? The combination of factors on the mainland that led to its extinction didn't happen on the islands, which is why the Tasmanian tiger survived another few years. But disaster was about to strike. Within 30 years of European settlement on Tasmania, the large flightless Tasmanian emu had been wiped out. This was believed to have been one of the Tasmanian tiger's primary sources of prey, and subsequently, their numbers plummeted. On top of this, many farmers considered the Tasmanian tiger pests, as they were apparently caught killing chickens and sheep on their farms. They earned a bad reputation as sheep killers, cold and ruthless. This has since been disputed because the jaws of the Tasmanian tigers were not thought to be strong enough to kill a sheep. Even so, bounty hunters and farmers alike relentlessly killed the animals, leading further to their demise. Europeans also brought with them dogs, which became feral. These dogs likely competed with the native Tasmanian tigers for food and territory, which probably added to their ultimate extinction. But is it possible that some small population managed to survive? Hidden in the deepest parts of Tasmania, away from persecution and away from competition? Maybe. Or at least maybe they survived a lot longer than originally thought. Certainly, persisting in Tasmania into the last century. Now, new evidence has been brought to light, which suggests some may have survived longer than originally reported, and there may even still be a small population alive today. Whilst most researchers believe that this cannot be true, as by now somebody would have at least come across a dead Tasmanian tiger at some point. There is mounting evidence that they may have survived in the wild far longer than the early 1900s. In a new study, scientists evaluated more than 1,200 alleged sightings of Tasmanian tigers since 1910. They aimed to determine how long they survived in the wild based on these reports and new DNA analysis that has since been made possible. They concluded that there would have been some wild individuals surviving at least until the 1950s, sometime after the last known captive specimen died. Even more amazingly, their evidence suggests there is a chance they survived until the 1990s. But there might be a flaw in this research, as many of these sightings are thought to be false. Some suggest that because of its dog-like appearance, people may be reporting seeing Tasmanian tigers when in fact they are catching glimpses of dogs. Either way, some scientists are focused on trying to bring the Tasmanian tiger back from extinction, although this practice is generally frowned upon by many scientists, as extinct species had their time, and reintroducing them would have severe ecological and ethical consequences. It is not so black and white for the Tasmanian tiger. Andrew Pask at the University of Melbourne is an epigenetics professor and aims to use gene editing to resurrect the Tasmanian tiger. He and the other scientists, who founded the Thylacine Integrated Genomic Restoration Research Lab, argue that the species' extinction was a very recent extinction event, driven by humans, and their habitat and ecosystem still exist today. This means that relatively fresh DNA is available to them to use, and they may well still be thriving today had it not been for the introduction of humans into their habitats. This is unlike the extinction of the dinosaurs, which was an entirely natural case. If resurrected, it seems that the Tasmanian tiger will likely be able to fit back into the niche in which it once roamed. Scientists have already mapped the genome or blueprint for the Tasmanian tiger. It is the highest quality genome for any extinct species. They plan to use its nearest extant relative, the fat-tailed Dunnart, to provide living cells for the de-extinction project. Successfully bringing back a species from the dead is an incredible achievement, but is it the right thing to do? That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.